Good afternoon, and here we are with uh, Bitcoin, and I want to take note of something here. Um, we're still stuck in no man's land, and there's nothing for us to really do but wait. Uh, so I can't really do any active trades. I'm going to show you a recent one, a successful one that we had, but uh, other than that, there's nothing really out there of interest and you can see this little triangle that we had here that I showed you on the last pattern after um, actually let's move it from here um, after this broke and completed it went down to here that's all it had to do then it set up this one one two three the break right there and then you know where are we right now well we're in the middle of nowhere we are nowhere interesting, nowhere of interest or to do anything. Um, there's a good chance that it could break above here and continue up to here, or we can get back down to uh, the low 25K area and test over here. Uh, this is where you can actually start to have trades. You would look to buy as it broke below here uh, or touched or, you know, in this area. Um, other than that, there's nothing to really do. All right, now let's go to some trades that I had recently. Um, this one over here completed, as was noted in the chat room last week. And let's put that over there. Here, let's move these around, a matter of fact. Make it bigger. Ugh, I wish there was a way to lock this. Um, so here's Ethereum. I had a 10% hedge short here that I opened up above 21, in the 2120 range, basically. And uh, my target was on this pattern, and it was right down here in the 1760s, uh, 64 and under, and it hit there, and I took off the 10% hedge. So that trade worked out. What would I do from here? I would look to close these if we get a drop down below um, but that doesn't really matter I closed this one this is the most recent one and this was the hedge from here based off the pattern so that was closed out and I took the profits on that and um, other than that we have XRP news and it completed its pattern as well similar pattern on there um, uh, now I was asked about, uh, do you know, should I open a new position? Well, uh, ultimately, unless it gets a break below this 38 right here, um, it's not ideal. Uh, if I didn't have a position in it, I would basically have bought right here when it went down to this target area down here. Um, but if I don't have a position in it, I'm looking for numbers that go way, way higher. But those are long-term numbers. So, you know, it depends on what you want your trade to be. Like, I have a target that goes all the way up to the 78, uh, 78 cents range up here, just off of this target right there. It already hit this one here. So now it needs to go over and make the move for here. And I believe that'll happen in the future. Uh, we have some indications here. Uh, we draw a trend line. You can see that it's broken this little downtrend right here. It's not really that great uh, or something of really of interest to me. Uh, you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for numbers that go all the way up to 78 cents and above. And ultimately, numbers that go the next one above 78 cents is in the 127, 26 area right here, I believe. Uh, that would be the next number up. But these are all long-term numbers. I want to make note of that. You know, if I didn't have anything in this and I was just buying straight, I would buy anywhere under um, the anywhere in the 40 cent range, and ultimately, ideally, under 40 cents and in the 38 cent range like where I was going down here. Um, that's where I ideally would buy. 
But if I didn't have a position in it, I would be looking for numbers. I would buy a new position and target numbers that go to 78 cents and higher numbers. I, I would look for a double at the very least. Uh, so the one dollar and 20 cent range would be my ultimate, uh, what I would look for. And I'll probably even look for higher numbers than that. I, I think that XRP, once that course, court case gets uh, resolved, um, they're going to jump up not only to here, but to numbers up here. And they could even run higher than that. Um, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. That's what my thinking is on XRP. Now, let's go to Pepe, because Pepe had that trade that I had over here. And I want to showcase this one, because this was a, a very good trade. And uh, it worked out very well just for the short-term target. Um, now I was asked, you know, should I close my trade? Should I? I can't tell people what to do with their money. I want to keep repeating that to you. I'm not a financial advisor. If I was licensed and I can go over and give that advice, then I would do that. But I'm not. I'm just a trader and I just show people what I trade and uh, impart my knowledge upon others. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I want to make that very clear. Do not ask me to tell you what to do with your money. I can't do that. I'm not legally allowed to. So. Um, Pepe was a great trade. If you wanted the short-term target all the way back up to this 19.7 and above, you got it. It was it just hit very quickly. It took uh, no time at all from when I came out with the trade back over here. Uh, it it uh, pulled back down under 12 cents like I said it would likely do, and it did. Went to this level right here. And... Um, it ran all the way up to that target, the first short-term target. Now, what would I look for beyond this? The main target is all the way over here. And, um, you know, if you don't want the short-term trade, then there's your first target. If you did want the main trade, main target, then you basically will wait and see how long that takes to, to hit. Um, high percentage of the time, uh, uh, you will get this target hit the majority of the time. Um, this is so new, it has such a short lifespan. This was from, I believe, April 18th or 28th, something like that. Somewhere in that, or somewhere in April. It's, it's been like a month this has been trading. So um, it's kind of a, a risky one, but technically it has the volume and the dynamics and it's done everything that you would expect it to do, uh, including this move up to here. It did that very quickly. And um, from here, the next target up would be over here. So if you just wanted that short-term trade, in a few days you had it right to there. Nothing to think about. Um, or you could have taken half off and then hold the rest for this up here. How you trade that is up to you. I just give the targets and the, uh, the trades, and uh, you, do, you go from there. Um, the last one we're going to talk about in this video is silver. Silver is breaking down to this line. It's created a little pattern over here, or one, two, three, and it looks like it wants to do what? Well, I'm not going to say anything because I think we're going to still go lower. Uh, and I would look for numbers to go all the way back down to here uh, before we get our next move higher. So I'm just going to wait on silver. Uh, if it doesn't do that and decides to go, you know, up to the way to the upside, that's fine. I still have half of my position. Um, uh, you know, I from the free money trade all the way down here. This was a great trade. I told you what I thought would happen, and it's pretty much happened except for the only thing that we're waiting on is, is the move down to here. So I will buy back the other half that I sold up here um, when we get back down to here. If we don't get back down to here, then I'll just be waiting for 36 and above. 
uh, because that is my target on this and we'll see where we go from there right now um, it kind of double topped over here and all it needs to do is get down to here so you know my thinking on that one I can't trade it any better than I have it's done everything that I expected it to do and um, it's had some really fantastic trades it's always had some fantastic trades every time I've gotten in and out of this it's done everything especially this trade down here was the star of the show uh, when uh, JP Morgan manipulated the price and because they were short and they can do that because the government doesn't care if you're a corrupt bank you can do whatever you want and since they have the they are the acts they're the ones that control the price on silver uh, they hold the most of it uh, they were able to press the prices down and they should be in jail for it but anyway um, see that was an amazing move from down here to here <laughs> nothing to say uh, it's traded perfectly from up here down back to here back up to here and then back down to here then where we are right now over here this was a buy area and then it traded up to there then it traded back down here then it was a free money trade down here and then up to here, then back down to here, oops, and where do we go from here? Well, if it keeps doing exactly as it should, it'll go back down to here, and then make the bigger move up to $36 and above. Um, so that's what I see. That's it for the video. I hope you guys have a good rest of the week. I will see you on the weekend, and hopefully something will happen, or maybe nothing will happen. We'll see. Uh, but we're in wait and see mode, uh, mainly on Bitcoin. And you know what? I'm looking to see what happens here. Price action is neither really negative or positive. It's just kind of blah, really. Um, it has a, still a slight downside bias, but I'm in no man's land, so nothing I can do. Anyway, that's it for the video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.